Friends, hello, my name is Nathan. I work for Pape Machinery Ag and Turf here in Roseburg, Oregon. And I wanted to take this opportunity to introduce myself. I'm relatively new to agriculture. I spent my previous career pursuing um, aviation as a pilot and a mechanic. And uh, that ironically led me to agriculture. So come with us as we have some conversations and hopefully bring some value to you all on the Pape Machinery Toolkit. This video is for people who don't know anything about tractors. It's for folks that are um, interested in a tractor, are interested in buying one, but um, self-admittedly just have no experience. And uh, this is for, uh, to give confidence to you guys, really. It's when you come into, the, come into a store or you're doing research online, it's to give you just some basic terms, some basic context of what a tractor is and equip you with uh, the terminology and again, the confidence to speak about um, the different features of a machine um, that you, you need and to understand the sales guy when he's walking around showing you all the different uh, components of a tractor. I wanna walk around um, this particular tractor and I've, I've chosen this one specifically because of its kind of roots to what a lot of tractors throughout uh, let's say the last 40 years have been equipped with. So this is a John Deere 3025D. That means that it's part of the three family, uh, the three series or the three family uh, tractor group. And it's a 25 horsepower tractor and uh, it's a D model. So before I go into giving you uh, terms and definitions of what these different components are on a tractor, I wanna give a little context of what is a tractor. Uh, what were people trying to solve? What, what challenge or, or, or work were people trying to do when the tractor was invented? Uh, interestingly enough, this harkens back to the beginning of John Deere. In the 1800s, John Deere was solving a problem. He was solving um, how to plow without mud getting stuck on the plowshare. And that innovation led to the beginning of John Deere, and which has then led to what a tractor is. So at its core, a tractor came into being to pull. It's a, it's a pulling device. And that's actually one of the reasons why tractors have big wheels in the back. And I'll go into that a little bit later. The next thing that a tractor is, a modern tractor, is that it's a hydraulic pump. It produces hydraulic pressure and it distributes that pressure and flow to do work um, with hydraulic cylinders. And the third thing that a tractor is, is it's a power output, if you will. And the term we use for that is PTO. It takes engine power and um, directs that to an output shaft that can be, um, you can connect other um, mode of power implements to, to accomplish work. So again, in review, a tractor is a, is a, a pulling machine or a pushing machine in case of a loader, but originally was a pulling machine, is a hydraulic pump, to utilize hydraulic components, and it has a power output that allows you to hook up um, other mechanical implements. So with that context or that foundation laid, let's go through and discuss the, the terms that you're gonna hear and kinda need to know when you're shopping for a tractor. I think a good place to start is a front. Almost all the tractors we sell are equipped with a front end loader. And that's what this frame is that you see right here. It utilizes hydraulic cylinders for lifting um, and tilting and, and, and um, other, other functions that we'll talk about later. So attached to the loader most commonly is a bucket. And most of our machines have a detachable bucket. And you can add other attachments to the front. And again, we'll talk more about that. But this is the loader, okay? Um, whenever you see I refer to these um, as cylinders. Some people call them pistons or rams, but this is a, a hydraulic cylinder. Uh, of course, we have wheels and tires. For those of you that are brand new, when you're shopping for a tractor, you actually have a choice in wheel or tires, most commonly. Bigger tractors, you can actually select different tire um, treads and wheel widths and sizes, okay? 
but just know you have a choice um, with tire tread on, on these style tractors. Uh, when you're looking at a John Deere, you're going to notice that there's some numbers on the hood, and these numbers tell a story. They tell which family of tractor that the tractor belongs to, it tells the horsepower, the engine horsepower, and then it gives sort of a series um, or a trim package uh, designation. We'll talk about the operator station in a moment, but as we're coming back, this is a feature that you'll see. This is called a ROPS, or a rollover protection system. And that is a, think of it as a giant kickstand that in the unfortunate event of tipping, it's gonna prevent the tractor from rolling all the way over. So this is called a ROPS. When we come to the back, um, we have the three-point hitch and the rear axle. This is also where the PTO, or power takeoff, uh, is situated. So when we're discussing um, the hitch, you're gonna hear the term a three-point hitch, and it gets its name from one, two, and three points of contact. The arms that do the lifting, you're gonna hear people use different terms for them, um, but draft links is the term that we most commonly use. The P2 itself is an extension of the transmission. It's an output shaft that is geared through the transmission to the engine. And on tractors like this, most commonly are designed to run at 540 RPM. The reason the 540 RPM is important is because many of the implements are designed to achieve their maximum um, output potential at 540 RPM. So, in review, a PTO and a three-point hitch. What else you're going to find back here is a drawbar. And you're going to hear two terms for drawbars, uh, but the, the primary term and that what we use in referring to the tractor specifically is a, a tractor-mounted drawbar. And that is the place that you're going to hook up a trailer or maybe you're going to pull an implement of some kind it's also a hard point, if you will, for a safe place to hitch onto the tractor and do pulling, uh, whatever, whatever pulling you're trying to do. So we have a, uh, a three-point hitch, we have a PTO, and we have a drawbar. On some tractors, you're gonna have some hydraulic outputs, and the term John Deere uses is an SCV, stands for Selectable Control Valve. Other um, other terms you're going to hear is a hydraulic remote. And what that is, is it's a, it's a hookup point to plug in hoses for something else and use the tractor's hydraulic pump to power um, a hydraulic function um, on another implement. An example of that might be uh, a baler that has a door that opens and closes. That's just one of many examples. In this tractor, the fuel tank happens to be back here and it runs diesel. So I don't know of any tractors sold anymore that run on gasoline. Uh, Off-road diesel, which is colored red, is uh, acceptable for these tractors and recommended. And um, everything we sell in, a, in the tractor category is diesel. As we keep walking all the way around, we're going to come to um, this loader control. The term we use is a mid-valve. Or, um, and the mid-valve is actually the, the valve mechanism itself that distributes hydraulic flow from the hydraulic pump on the engine to power the cylinders to actuate the loader and its associated components. The mid-valve is controlled with a loader joystick, which allows for, again, control of the loader. Something that uh, a lot of people don't know about that are new to equipment and machines is a um, a function known as float control. And every tractor that John Deere sells with a loader has float control. And uh, to avoid a, too long of a conversation, it's just a way to, um, to finesse the control of the loader for certain tasks. I'll leave it at that. Ask, um, ask a salesperson what that means and he can demonstrate that for you. Another comment as we're looking at the front of the tractor is the front axle and the axle is important uh, because it keeps the wheels on, but also because um, I would say 90% or more of the tractors we sell are four-wheel drive. And in the compact utility uh, category of tractors, 
which in review is the one, two, three, and four series tractors, roughly 23 to 66 horsepower. In the compact utility market or category, uh, man, almost every single tractor we sell is four wheel drive and that's desirable. So just know that um, this particular tractor is equipped with four wheel drive and the, that's, that's pretty much all people want these days. Okay. In a tractor um, the, where the operator sits, there's, there's two common configurations. There's what we call an open operator station, or OOS. You'll see that term um, in brochures and other literature, or a cab. Now this is an open operator station, and um, it's the most common and affordable option. When I climb up here in this tractor, there's several controls, and uh, that brings to that, that brings about the conversation of a transmission choice. I, I selected this tractor because it's the most conventional, mechanical, simple, kind of not old school, but just traditional um, uh, setup that you're going to find. Most people with a little bit of experience with tractors remember driving their dad's or their uncle's or their grandpa's old tractor. It's going to be a manual transmission. And this one is too. So just like in um, an automobile, you have a clutch, you have a tow throttle, and you have a shifter. So those are all common across um, tractors in most automobiles. In addition to um, a truck or a car with a manual transmission, you have um, the ability to select ranges. So most four wheel drive trucks have high and low range. Uh, tractors do too. In addition to high and low range, um, you have a control that's going to control forward and back. Most of the transmissions, there's some exceptions, the, the forward and reverse control is a handle located up um, on the dash near the steering wheel. The other uh, choice that you can have in, regarding transmission, and is actually really common, um, is a hydrostatic transmission. Uh, think of that as uh, the equivalent of an of a automatic transmission in a car. There's no clutch, uh, shifting is really very simple, you just select high or low range, and you use pedals to make the tractor go forward and backwards. The more you push the pedal, the faster you go. And we'll discuss that a little bit more. Another feature of a tractor different than an automobile is in addition to a tow pedal for, th for the throttle, you also have um, a manual control one way to think of it is it's a minimum RPM setting. So you can basically you can control the speed of the engine with the lever, but it, it sets it um, and there's no return. It just keeps the power or the RPM set in that position. That's helpful when you're running an implement that needs a set amount of uh, PTO power to run whatever implement you're running. An example would be a tiller. So instead of having to hold your toe down to keep the engine going, you can just set it with that handle. So hopefully this little walk around is helpful to give, um, to equip you with basic terms and uh, actually see uh, what these, these terms and um, these components actually look like. So that's all I had. Uh, it's kind of a lot, but hopefully you can digest that. Again, please don't hesitate to, to call and um, engage that conversation with us. We love to talk about this stuff and we really want you to be informed and confident moving forward as you think about a tractor. So that's what I got for you today. Again, my name's Nathan and this is Pape Machinery Toolkit.